So now that I remember, I actually bought another collection around this time for seal boxes from a person who was going to sell to Rudy Chan for half the amount of money I paid him. Did I overpay? Yeah. Uh, David Adams' buy list was incredibly high at the time compared to today. In fact, many of the booster boxes you see right now, in fact, I paid actually more money than this and that previous deal and do I regret it yeah I don't remember how much money it was but I remember that it was a lot of money and basically I, I'm going to tell you that investing in sealed boxes if you want to actually make some money is impossible if you like to collect it and open some boxes for slight discount then that makes sense so after shipping, so shipping to me, uh, and then also the the credit, the, the wire fee, after all of that, if I were to sell any of these boxes, I would be at best break even, but probably losing some money. Now, again, you have to consider that, even, and that's assuming my time is $0 an hour. So investing in sealed boxes is not a good idea. I'm going to show you the chart, and it goes straight down. I'm not really sure why Rudy Chan is saying that we are in a bull market. A bull market would indicate that the line would be going up when every one of these boxes has dropped probably 25, 30, 40%. I mean, some of them literally off a cliff. You know, I mean, this one right here, I mean, there's literally a cliff. Actually, two cliffs now that I look at it. Three cliffs, maybe. And I do not think these boxes will ever get to the price they used to be during the great uh, height of investment, if you will. So um, back to my point, um, you're competing with people who have 9, 20, 50 of these boxes and they're always willing to undercut you at any, because only one of these boxes sell like a month. As you can see, one of them sold this month. And the last time any of them have sold, even at 180 which is a really low price point. What I'm suggesting is very simple. The Rudy method of just buying boxes, putting them in storage, hoping they go up in price is not feasible. It's not feasible. And, and you say, oh, well, the boxes didn't age right. It's got to be like a fine wine. No, these boxes have been here for like 8, 10 years almost. Some of them... I think core 2020, 2012 has been here for 10 years. You expect it to, you know, have a little life, right? But look at them. They just, honestly, they drop off a cliff. And I do not think with all the new specialty sets and secret layers that there's any reason for somebody to break them. You break a box of War of the Spark, maybe you get like $15 back. You break a box of Magic Origins, you'd be, you'd be happy to get $20 back in, in re retail singles, right? And then, God forbid you break some of the older stuff. Like, I have a box of Fallen Empires that I purchased for like $600, $700. I've been trying to sell that box forever. <laughs> Nobody wants it for any price. So basically, what I'm trying to tell you is investing in sealed magic is a dummy move now these are regular boxes i'm happy to go over collector boxes which i bought a shit ton of and also the specialty sets where which are modern horizons actually i bought i'm looking behind me modern horizons i bought a lot of that conspiracy conspiracy take the crown modern masters iconic masters uh, i'll go over those boxes too i just have to find the other email man i got effed uh, and, and people say, oh, investing in sealed, so easy, so easy. Like, Pokemon has never effed me. If you invest in Pokemon sealed, it always goes up. You invest in, I'm showing you actual charts from TCG Player over a year. At no point in time is this thing not dropping off a cliff. <laughs> like, at all periods of time, these sets are legit dropping off. And these are these sets that Rudy Chan sold the most of. And you might be like, oh, how do you know? This is not Rudy. No, this is actually coming from a person who bought all his boxes from Rudy. The, the way I got these boxes, they still even had Rudy's address on them. 
if they came in a sealed case, which a lot of them did. These boxes that I now hold as a bag holder came directly from Rudy Chan, Alpha Investments. Now people say, oh, you're just sour grape. I mean, yeah, I put in $30,000 and I don't think I will ever see, at this point in time, I just have to kind of open them all because <laughs> that's, I mean, at the prices I paid for them, War to Spark 110, and I have uh, 29 of those boxes. Core 2012, 160. Core 2013, 125. Core 2014, 150. Thank God I only have one of those. Uh, Magic Origins 105. I I'm okay at the 105, 100 because that's just like a fun open. Core 2020, I have 24 of those. 100 a pop. I mean, I don't know what is in Core 2020, but I hope that there's something that, you know, goes up in price and isn't reprinted to oblivion. Ravnica Allegiance, I have 10 of those for 100 a pop. Journey to Nyx, I have 6 of those. Terrible buy, terrible buy. I, I, I don't even think it's 115 right now. Rivals of Ixalan, I have 6 of those for 120. Oh, man, like I, you know, puke right now. Uh, Guilds of Ravnica, 11 for 100 to Dominaria, free for 170. Holy F. And I have 10 Dominarias? <laughs> 170? Oh. oh, man, that was a slaughter. Fate Reforged, people said that was a good set. It's not. 115, I have 5 of those, Commander Legends. And this does not include, this is only the one email I found. I have another email where I actually paid higher prices from a guy. <laughs> um... In that case, there was more diversity, though. He was selling me, like, a single collection. It was a more interesting collection. I forget where it started, but it started... Sorry, I think the audio is kind of, like, bad because I'm talk I'm looking at the boxes right now. The ba Battle Bond, there was a lot of really interesting, unique boxes. So in that particular case, when the guy's just selling one of every box for umpteen years, it's a lot more interesting than when you buy, like... 29 War of the Spark and Modern Horizons is far worse. I got Modern Effing destroyed in Modern Horizons. Like if I show you the chart for Modern Horizons, you you would cry. I'm crying right now. So the idea that you can buy boxes, keep them sealed for 10 years, and then suddenly they skyrocket in price does not make sense. These boxes are not investable, as I have learned. I have lost a shit ton of money. All right, okay, so basically, I, I will put it this way. I didn't lose money, but I don't... It would take me a lot of effort to find a sucker who would buy all of this for me, for what I paid, plus shipping, plus uh, fees, right? I mean, Dominaria, when you're buying for 170 and there's a dude who's going to ship it for free on TCG Player for 185 Like, what, what can I say, guys? <laughs> what can I say? It doesn't make... How am I going to compete against this guy, guys? How am I bloody going to compete against this dude? Like, at 250 maybe I have a shot. Maybe I got a shot. But at 185 and only one of them has sold all month, I, these are screenshotted today. Today, today. Like, you know, like... And then the question is, who's opening this stuff? Like, are people just buying it to collect? Now, you might be like, oh, Tony, don't you have unsleeve? Like, my unsleeve stuff is really easy to sell. Like, when there's single booster pack, somebody can overpay for a single booster pack, but nobody in their right mind is going to overpay for a booster box. They'd be like, oh, I remember this. Hey, I'll open a pack. Yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. I would do that too. What does not make sense, and the sad part about this is I could have bought... $30,000, maybe $60,000 of Pokemon cards at the time. Booster boxes. And I'd be rich as hell. Instead, I bought magic boxes. I could have bought money effing Pokemon boxes. I'm looking at my Pokemon boxes right now. Sun and Moon, Burning Shadow. I bought a bunch of them. Cheap, um, unbroken bonds. At that time, there was this fear that they would reprint everything, right? But they didn't. They reprinted Evolving Skies a million times, which sucks for me because I have a lot of ETBs of that. But my Pokemon boxes have done significantly better. Look look at... Oh, I don't even know what this is. This must be the one thing that went up. Commander Legends. This is Commander Legends. It's the one thing that actually... I can sell and make like a 10% profit off of. <laughs> Everything else was... 
It's the definition of a mother effing bloodbath. And you're like, oh, oh no, Throne of the Eldrin. The last two actually didn't like plummet into like a dark hole. The last two actually did pretty well. I'm looking at the graphs right now. So out of all the boxes I purchased, War of the Sparks kind of crashed. This one crashed. All the core sets did very poorly. Magic Origins, very poorly. Corset, very poorly. Corset, Corset, Corset 2020, unfortunately, have crashed into oblivion. Uh, Round the Cut, Legions did poorly. There, there's, there's some... This did poorly. Nyx did poorly. Ixlon did very poorly. Uh, guilds, the guilds of Round the Cut went up. No, that's a free month. No, never mind. It went down. Everything went down, minus Commander Legends, plus um, Throne of the Eldrin. I mean, why, why Throne of the Eldrin? I don't know. Honestly, don't know how that one went up. Probably should have got more of those. But if you're finding this interesting, these are real numbers. These are real data. There's a real buy list. This is what I actually paid. I paid this amount plus shipping. Shipping was like $1,000 if I remember correctly. So I split it. So I paid 500 plus, 500 ish versus shipping. And then I paid like some type of wire fee on top. Um, so yeah. It was a mother effing bloodbath. And uh, so if you bought it just to have it and just to like be a collector, I think it was not a bad deal. But if you bought it to sell it, yeah, you are um, effed. I'm not, not you are effed. I'm effed. Hi, guys.